and I'm back. I do apologize for being gone for around uh, 10 months, but um, I'm back, and uh, yeah, hopefully I'll be uploading more videos on a more uh, routine basis now. But before I left, I posted a thread on reddit.com, and uh, I was basically asking which game I should do next, and by far uh, most of the users, or the majority of the users, chose Kerbal Space Program. So today I'll be playing Kerbal Space Program. Um, I'm kind of uh, on a Fallout craze currently, so I'm not going to be playing the career. Um, I'm just going to be doing a sandbox, just to give a general idea of what the game is. And, uh, Apparently I can't type and talk very well today. Usually I can. Okay, well anyways, you choose um, whether you want a sandbox or career. Um, although that doesn't really have much anything to do with what I'm doing at this point. Okay, um, so what this is, is this is your uh, astronaut complex or Kerbernaut complex. Now, uh, the reason everything in the game seems to start with K is because you're on this planet called Kerbin. And Kerbin is inhabited with little creatures called Kerbals. These little guys. And you saw a few on the startup screen. Well, anyways, uh, these little... Um, I'm not sure exactly what they are due to the fact that I leave several stranded on celestial bodies for uh, pretty much eons. I, I like to think that they are frog creatures capable of sustaining life off of uh, nothing but... Um, pure photosynthesis. Um, now I know this probably isn't true and I'm probably killing hundreds of Kerbals, sending them to places and then stranding them there. But who cares? I just start a new game and I forget about them. Well anyways, you are in charge of their growing astronaut program. Um, a little information about the planet, Kerbin. Uh, it's about one-third the size of Earth with one-tenth the gravity which means that it requires a lot less delta V to escape into orbit. Um, I'm not sure offhand, I should probably have them written down, but I, uh, or at least memorized, but I don't. Alright, so um, today what we'll be doing is we're just going to be basically be trying to build a basic um, launch platform. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put something on here that's not really going to be used, which is this giant fuel tank. Now what I'm doing this for is basically I need weight. Now this is the vanilla, meaning that I don't have, well, I don't have many mods. I only have one actually, which is this little guy right here that I'm holding. Um, and what this is, is called MechJeb. And it provides me a flight control computer as well as flight data for my vessel. Um, so like right now, it'll tell me the, uh, no, oh there we go, right beside it, it'll tell me the vessel mass. So this right here, this is going to be my payload. Now I'm going to be able to replace this with satellites, landers, uh, multiple configurations of different types of uh, spacecraft. But the reason I'm just sending up a giant fuel tank right now is so that I know my limit is 36.9 tons for this launch vehicle. That means I should be able to send up 36.9 tons um, or less and not have to worry about adding on any extra rockets. So, um, unfortunately, this is just going to have to be brought down back out of orbit. So, let's add a few engines on here for that. And we'll also probably want to be controlling it in some way, shape, or form. So what we'll do is we'll add guidance system, our giant RCS block, put the nose cone back on, and we'll put some RCS jets. Now what these RCS jets are is the same ones that uh, operate normal spacecraft. Basically it's uh, compressed gases that are expelled. Um, it's called the reaction control system. And uh, this, this generally 
but makes it so that a craft can uh, adjust its pitch yaw and roll, since obviously control surfaces such as ailerons and rudders won't work in outer space. Alright, well, we've got our payload, and our payload, our payload now weighs 44.5 tons, so we can lift 44.5 tons in outer space on this launch platform without any alternate configuration. And now basically what I have to do is I have to add certain components to make sure the rocket itself can sustain a moderate orbit. What I'm going for here is a high altitude orbit of approximately 1,000 kilometers. Um, now the GSO of Kerbin, uh, geostationary orbit, is approximately, oh, what was that again? I believe it was um, either 98 kilometers or 120 kilometers, uh, although that doesn't reflect the values of uh, geostat orbit in on Earth, or for Earth, because like I said, Kerbin is one-third the t size, and gravity is one-tenth. Now, the difference between uh, the components here, I probably should have been explaining what I was doing. I did up here. Uh, but basically, I'll repeat. This is a decoupler. This separates the two stages with a moderate amount of force. These are uh, fuel tanks, and each one contains two types of fuel, liquid fuel and oxidizer. Oh, well, actually, these are liquid fuel tanks. I'll take this off. These are the different types of engines. Um, as you can see, we have multiple types. We have uh, the single thrusters, just like this one up here, as well as the multi-thruster configurations, like this one, which has uh, four. And then we have the solid rockets. The difference being that, uh, just like in real life, the uh, liquid fuel rockets can uh, have their throttle adjusted in flight, while the liquid fuel rocket, or the solid fuel rockets, are pretty much, uh, once you start them, you, you can't turn them off. Uh, and that is also the case in uh, current rockets. Uh, the one, well, for those of us that live uh, through the space shuttle era, since it's no longer being launched, when the shuttle launched, it had a very large orange tank. Now, that was the fuel tank, uh, liquid fuel. Now, the two on the side that uh, are pushed off mid-flight, now, those are solid fuel. And basically, once those are started up, you cannot stop them. Um, the fuel starts burning at the bottom. Down here, it's ignited, and it slowly works its way up. Um, it's, 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 uh, I believe it may have been one of the first rocket technologies created uh, in lieu of uh, liquid fuel, um, which you can think the Germans for heavy development in with World War II, the the V2 or the V-series v rocket was uh, or established some of the founding principles of rocketry and later during Operation Paperclip when the US grabbed some of the scientists left over from World War II it resulted in the United States uh, aeronautical program known as NASA not saying or implying that uh, the two groups are related in any way, but it's kind of interesting that after World War II, most of, uh, most of the scientists from Germany was recruited over to America, and most of them resulted in uh, what we, we now call our, our rocket program, although seeing as we now have to rely on Russia to launch us up, it's not, uh, not all too promising, although hopes, hopefully some private ventures will take care of that. All right, well, okay, I, I probably should have also been explaining this. These right here are struts. Um, you can never have too many struts. If, uh, well, yeah, that, that you can never have too many struts. That's, that's the thing. They basically reinforce the craft. And although I do know that in later editions, uh, this was patched up. I like in early or in earlier editions, uh, those who was th those of us 
people around for the earlier edition kind of have a tendency for overdoing it on the struts, which has resulted in a few memes going around. But um, you can never have too many struts, and you can you can never have too many solid rocket boosters uh, or SBRs, which they are known. Yeah. All right. Well, I believe this should do it. Um, what these are is these are launch pylons. Basically, these will fall away right here. These will swing it down like this once I launch the craft. Now, right here, I have my order menu. Um, this right here is basically telling me or telling uh, the craft what to do on what stage. Let's get a nice view of the craft. Ah, it's a beauty, isn't it? feel like I should have the Apollo 13 music playing. Well, anyways. Oh, I can't even spell it, and I'm, I'm from there. Which, well, yes, I'm, uh, I'm from the place that invented the Charleston Chew, um, which was, uh, despite its name, Charleston. South Carolina. Although I could be completely wrong about that because a lot of people down there tend to spout off about things they don't particularly know about. So I'll have to verify that and uh, just consider myself a fool if it's false. Now I really want a Charleston Chew. I believe this should um, this should do it. One of the primary things you want to check um, is your delta v uh, right here in your delta v status. Now, what uh, this is is your thrust to thrust to weight ratio. Which oh, I'm getting rid of those. That's not good. There we go. Okay. Anyways, this is your thrust to weight ratio. You want to make sure all of these are above 1.0. If it's 0 0.99, then your thrust is, say, 99 kilograms of force, while your weight is 100 kilograms of force, or 100 kilograms. Therefore, you're not going to do anything. You're just going to sit on the launch pad. This, on the other hand, has a 1 to 1 thrust ratio, although I don't like that. I don't like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to add we're going to get this SRB we're going to add it right here but then what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and add another one there we go oh and then we're going to add some more in the center okay now what we're going to do with these is we're only going to have these outside ones firing first so the interior ones are going to be firing second. And basically this will stagger them so that um, we don't waste all of our fuel at once. Now what I'm going to do here is when this launches, all of these are going to fall away. The primary liquid fuel engine is going to ignite and the four outboard the this one and this one and the other two on the other side this one and this one are going to ignite however the inboard solid rocket boosters are going to stay unlit now what's going to happen is we got to find the center all right that's that one so we're going to separate these and we're going to now what's going to happen here, what I just did here, is basically I told, told the ship, once I, once I initiate the first stage, it's going to launch the outboard SRBs and the primary liquid fuel rockets. Now after, or uh, once I trans, uh, transfer into the sec, or the, let's see, stage six, what's going to happen is these outboards are going to fall off, at, and this is all going to happen at the same time. These outboards are going to disengage from the main craft body using these decouplers, 
and at the same time the center inboard engines are going to ignite. So we shouldn't have uh, what usually results in um, a little bump, a little bit more of a bumpy ride. When I have these separated, the outboards stop, then it's only reliant under the power of the liquid fuel. Unfortunately, the um, the liquid fuel rockets don't have enough thrust, even at full thrust, to sustain the original speed. So basically, you have a lot of negative g-force pushing forwards because the rocket is suddenly going so much slower. And then you have a couple seconds go by, and you have the center ignite, which then pushes the rocket back up. Now, since the uh, liquid fuel rocket can't adjust quickly enough to the solid fuel, that means that you now have a positive g-force pushing you back in your seat, or at least the Kerbals do, since you're now going faster, you are accelerating a lot faster. So um, adding all these at once hope kind of transfers some of that force uh, into each other so it doesn't, because normally there's a 0.5 to 1 second pause between stages. Now with this, you should kind of combine a few of the actions so that it doesn't result in a lot of the unneeded force to the craft. Alright, now here's uh, here's my launch windows. Now there's the rocket. Now basically, let's, let's explain a few of these. This is my Delta V, which you saw. Um, this is the vessel info. These two windows you saw during the uh, when I was building it, and those are pretty much self-explanatory. This is my orbital info, which gives my orbital speed, my AP, and PE because I, I can't pronounce those. I'm not going to try. Um, if you're wondering why, uh, reflect, I grew up in South Carolina's public education system. English isn't my strong point, unfortunately. Uh, then you have the orbital period, uh, which is the time it takes to complete one complete orbit around the current body you're orbiting. The time to AP, time to PE, inclination, eccentricity, and angle to prograde. Uh, now these are uh, used for pretty much if you want to do everything manually. That's why we have this, Maneuver Planner. This lets me do pretty much everything I need to do without actually crunching these numbers and figuring out exactly what course and what, uh, what course I need to be set on. Here's the surface information which details the information about the current uh, body that I'm orbiting. So right now it's for Kerbin. Um, basically saying all the details about it. Um, what else do we have? Here's our utilities and what we'll be doing is we'll be limiting to terminal velocity. Basically that means that uh, we will be throttling our throttle to so that we aren't wasting any force trying to escape our planet. We're not going to limit acceleration or throttle but this is all nice stuff to have. We do want smooth throttle. Smooth throttle presents this uh, throttle from going from say 0 to 50 percent in a split second. This makes it go much more smoother. I've got landing guidance. Uh, I can land back on Kerbin, uh, KSC pad or the vehicle assembly building, or I can pick a tar target on the map and it'll let me do that. And it'll also give me um, different, uh, different areas apparently. I just saw that. It'll give me the longitude, latitude, and the area type. Well, anyways, um, what we're going to be doing now is the ascent guidance. And like I said, we're going to want to go to high Kerbin orbit. But right now, I think I'm going to adjust it. Let's do it to uh, LKO, the, the low Kerbal, Kerbin, or the low Kerbin orbit. We'll set that at 300 kilometers. We'll set the ascent path automatic to start turning at, oh, 30 kilometers. And we'll have our turn shape at 75%. Now we can gauge the autopilot, 